This video is another video about statistical tests and until now we had only param non-paramatic tests where there is no um, specific requirements to the data to apply a test statistic. These tests are usually not as powerful as parametric ones where we have additional information about the distribution or specific uh, characteristics of the data. and. With this additional information, tests usually can better distinguish between similarity or dissimilarity between two data sets or um, similarity to given distributions. And one of the most often used um, parametric tests is the t-test, and that's what we will talk about today. And since most of these tests have specific requirements, Usually there is a cascade of different tests that has to be applied before you can act, run the actual test. In the case of the t-test, we have at first make sure that our data are rather normal distributed. And we can use for that the already known Kolmogorov smirnov test, or probably better, the Shapiro test, which is specifically designed to test for normalities. If the data are not normal distributed, we have to use a non-parametric test to test differences between two, for example, uh, distributions. But in case of the t-test, this is um, probably a weak criterion because the t-test, especially when it comes to larger sample sizes, is rather robust. So although it, the data might um, not really fulfill the normality um, requirement, you probably also can use t-test. In specific cases you also can um, modify your data that they fit uh, the normality assumption for example by using a log transformation or so. If the data is normal distributed we also have to test against the variances if they are homogeneous between the two samples or not and with that information we can decide whether we should apply the normal the standard t-test if the variances are homogeneous or if we have to use the t-test with welsh correction which is suitable for um, data where the variance is not homogeneous and to decide that we have to use the t-test so usually you have to test whether we have normal distributed data then we have to test against the homo genity of the variances and if we know that we can decide which kind of test we can use. Additionally there is the situation where you have uh, dependent or independent samples and um, the background is for example you would have a dependent sample if you test for example um, patients before and after medical treatment to see if the medical treatment has had an effect on whatever um, characteristics of the person's blood, for example, is tested. In archaeology, we usually don't have dependent samples. We, most of the time we have independent samples. One situation where we might have a dependent sample is, for example, in could be in experimental archaeology where you bury some blades uh, in the path to see some uh, trampling effects and test, for example, the breakage before and after this experiment. And then you would have also a dependent sample. But most of the time we are testing independent samples. So I will not focus so much on this difference between dependent and independent sample. Okay, we have our test tree here and let's put that in action. Um, at first we have of course to load our data and I use the blade length data from uh, our course here which consists of the length of um, Silex blades and they are come from two sides and we want to test if there is for example a different industry uh, working here or different traditions how to um, process uh, Silex to come to blades 
Um, that might be the case, for example, if there is a chronological difference and you want to test if this has an effect or not. So to do that, at first we have, let's get back to our test tree, first we have to test for normality. And to do so, we can use the Kolmogorov Smirnov test. Since we have seen in the Kolmogorov Smirnov um, video that the Kolmogorov Smirnov test in R doesn't understand the uh, formula uh, notation, we have to divide our sample, uh, our, our data set into two samples dependent on the site. To do that, we make uh, another two new variables blades site one and blades site two. Blades site one should be filled with blades length from those blades where blades side equals to side one. And the same is true for side two, except for that it should equal to side two. So if we do that, we can see that we have two new numerical vectors here with just the blade lengths uh, from side one and from side two. And now we can test for normality. At first, we can have a visual inspection of our data. To do that, I plot the density, density of blades side one. You can see here the density uh, distribution of the lengths. It's a density representation, and we can add to that the density of the second side, and I color that red, so we can distinguish the two. And we already can see from the visual inspection, on the one hand, it looks rather normal, not in uh, from side one, but from side two, absolutely. And they seem to behave quite similar. So from just eyeballing, it seems that both distributions are rather comparable. Of course, we want to test that uh, specifically with, with a statistical test, but this already gives you some good information about that. Okay, now we apply the Kolmogorov Smirnov test, and to do so, we test each of these sites individually. KS test, as you remember, is the command, and if we look to the help, file, we can perform a one or two sample kolmogorov smirnov test here. Before we did the two sample kolmogorov smirnov test, when we compared two distributions, but if we do a goodness of fit test, this is a one sample kolmogorov smirnov test, and then the second sample, in quotation marks, comes from, uh, so in a two sample situation, it comes from a vector of data values, or in a one sample test, there has to be a character string naming a cumulative distribution function, such as p-norm. And p-norm is actually what we will use, because this describes the normal distribution. So we apply ks test to our blades from side 1, and we want to compare that with a normal distribution. And we have to specify parameters of the distribution that is uh, given as character string. So the mean and the standard deviation are the uh, parameters of the normal distribution. The mean should equal to the mean of the blades from side one and the standard deviation should also equal to the standard deviation of the blades side one. So we construct a normal distribution um, with the parameters from our actual data and compare that to the actual data and the distribution of them. Now if we run this, we can see that we have a p-value that's 0 0.42, so it's far from being um, far from being um, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.
far from being significant. So this doesn't um, is not different for the combo Gauss Smirnoff test from a normal distribution. And we can also do that for the second side. And here the p-value is even higher, so this looks even more like a normal distribution for the KS test. The thing is, the komogov smirnov test is rather conservative when it comes to distinguishing um, in respect to the normal distribution, so it might be better to apply a test that's specifically designed to test the normal distribution, and that's the Shapiro test. The command for that is Shapiro test, and we only have to feed in the data set that we want to test. So we start with Psi1, and we can see this nearly or slightly is significant. So we have a slightly significant difference from the normal distribution. And if we look here, that's here this shape that causes this distinction from the normal distribution. And if we use that for side 2, there is no difference from the Shapiro test visible, so this really looks very much like a normal distribution. As I said, um, we have uh, with the t-test a rather robust test, so in that case I would still use the t-test to compare these distributions, having in mind that the Shapiro test has had a significant result, and also this has to be um, documented when you're writing a report or an article about these data. Another way of identifying the um, visually identifying the relationship to normal distribution might be the QQ plot, where the quantiles are plotted. We had that already before. Um, you can plot that with the blade side one with the command QQ norm and then you see the theoretical quantiles of a normal distribution and the actual quantiles of the um, data distribution. And if this forms a straight line, then we have something that's very close to normal distribution. To have this line visualized, we can add the QQ line command. And you can see here, there is um, this is the line where the normal distribution would lie. So with one um, outlier here and several outliers here and here's something that's uh, above the line and this reflects the shape here of this curve. And if we do the same for the second side we will see that this is closer to the line and this also explains or is another visualization of the fact that the second sample is more normal distributed than the first one. So this is the visual inspection. might be helpful to do that before the test to have an idea about the distribution of your data. So as I said, um, for larger sample sizes, um, the normal distribution is not so strictly mandatory for the t-test and in this case this case here we also will work uh, from here on what our test tree so we tested for normal distribution and we decided that we yes we have rather normal distributed data now we have to test against the uh, variances if they are homogeneous or not and for that use the f test and the command for that is var test and we feed in blades side one and blades side two and also back to the test tree. The f-test also requires normal distributed data. That, that's why we have to at first test against normal distribution. So if we run this test we see that the p-value is 0 0.6 far beyond significant results. So um, we don't have to choose the alternative 
uh, hypothesis that the true ratio of variance is not equal to 1, meaning that the variances are not equal, and we stick to the null hypothesis that the variances are equal, and with that we can go on with yes here and apply standard t-test without Welsh correction to our data. Okay, um, having done that, we can start with the actual t-test. And also in that situation, the command is very well simple. t-test of blades side 1 against blades, blades side 2. And since we established that the variances are equal, we can add var, var equal equals to true. And this gives us a stronger t-test, a t-test with a higher power. Running that, we see that we performed a two-sample t-test and a p-value that is 0 0.79 something. Also, this is far beyond significance, meaning we have, we can't choose the alternative hypothesis that the true difference in means is not equal to zero. And we have to stick to the null hypothesis that the um, true difference in means is equal, meaning both samples do not differ significantly from each other. So before, um, for example, in the variance test, this not significant result gave us some information about the, the distribution of the data. But the actual test here, uh, when we have a not a significant result, we don't gain any new information because we can't decide whether the difference is actually um, significantly uh, between both samples or it's not and we don't or probably we don't have enough uh, samples to, to see this difference. So if the p-value is not significant it means either there is not enough pattern to have really a difference or we don't have enough data to prove this difference. We're not gaining new information if we stick to the null hypothesis. We only gain new information if we can reject the null hypothesis and choose the alternative hypothesis. What if we had not equal variances? In that case, I could say var equal equals to false. And then we get the Welsh two-sample t-test, the two-sample t-test with Welsh correction. And you can see that the um, p-value here is slightly higher, which is an indication that this Welsh test um, is not as powerful as the standard t-test where we have additional information, for example, the equal variances. We could also, if we look to the help of the t-test, we will see that the var equal equals to false is the standard set. So if I just take the same command here and remove that, we also get the Welsh to sample t-test because that's the default option here. The R assumes by default that we don't have equal variances and only if we test that before we can choose var equal equals to true that we get a more powerful test. So in the situation where you might have um, dependent samples or paired samples, there's this other option here that says pair equals to true. And if I, for educational purposes, use this option paired equals to true, I get an error because um, not both samples are not do not have the same length. That's something you would have if you test would test the patients before and after treatment. You would hopefully have the same number of patients. Some might 
have died, but you still would include that into your sample. And um, so in that case, both samples should have the same length. I just take the same sample twice to show you the, the output of that. We also will get um, a bit of an error result. We have now performed a paired t-test. Our p-value is an A because we actually tested the same sample twice, so we can't calculate a real p-value there. Um, in case of a true paired dependent sample, you would have, have a p-value here. And you can also combine that with the var equal to true. Um, so we get a non-meaningful result here, but if we have um, would have had a correct data set for that and we have had before um, made sure that the variances are equal, we could also have used that parameter. Okay, <coughs> this is the general outline of how to perform a t-test in R. At first we have of course to load the data, then we can inspect, inspect the data visually by plotting the density or using also the QQ plot. Then we have to test for normality. Usually Shapiro is the more powerful test for establishing normality in the data. Um, KS test is a uh, widely used alternative to that, although it's not as powerful. If we establish that the data is rather normal distributed, we can use a DF test or a variance test to test if the variances are equal. If so, we can decide to use the t-test with equal variances. If not, we have to use the t-test for unequal variances. The paired situation is something that in archaeology usually <coughs> is not um, present, so usually you will not have to uh, use the paired parameter here. And the result gives you an information about if the distributions, the mean of the distributions is um, <coughs> similar or different, meaning if the processes behind the production of the data are similar or different. So in plain words, if there were two industries at these different sites producing blades that are so different that also the resulting blade length would have been different, statistically significant different. The t-test is applicable for two samples, um, but what if we want to compare more than two samples? Uh, how this can be done, I will explain in the next video.